At first, there was the Zima board, and then came the Zima blade, and now the Zima cube. Damn, this thing's heavy. That's what she said. That's my joke, damn it, Dwight. Hey there, YouTube. I got myself a Zima cube. Check this thing out. If you didn't know what this is, Ice Whale is the company that created the Zima Blade on Kickstarter, it was, way back in 2021. Super successful for them. It was advertised as a hackable server, which I never really understood. You don't want your servers hacked or hackable. Guess I get where they're going with that. Fast forward to 2023-ish, this was put onto Kickstarter, the Zima Blade, the successor to the Zima board. This uh, showed up on Kickstarter about a year, year and a half ago or so. It was a lot like the Zima board, but with replaceable memory, even though it's DDR3, but this is not what this video is about. I'm rambling, damn it. Fast forward again to the end of 2023, and the first generation of this Zima Cube was starting to come out. I know there have been updates and changes to this thing, to the motherboard and the components on the board, and this one that I have is actually a third generation board or third revision of the motherboard for the Zima Cube. History lesson over, let's dive into this thing. But before we go any further, I do have to stress, Ice Whale did send me this device at no cost. There was no money exchanged for anything here. They're well aware that I'm gonna give my own full review from my point of view. That rhymed. You're welcome. And you guys all know that if it sucks, I'm gonna say it sucks. Now let's really get started. So this is gonna be an overview video of the device itself, of the hardware. And I want to compare the capabilities against some other NASs out there in a similar, similar price point or similar specs to see what I think would be a better setup for different use cases. I'm not gonna dive into their new Zima OS or any other operating system that can be installed onto this. I will go over the NAS using Zima OS in future videos though. So definitely stick around for that. All right, diving into this damn thing. There are two models of the Zima Cube. There's the standard and the pro model. Here is the spec sheet. This is the one I have, the Zima Cube. The Zima Pro is a higher end processor. It's got a 10 core processor instead of just a quad core. It comes with 16 gigs of DDR5 on its base model versus the base eight gig DDR4 that comes with this one with the standard model. My machine did ship with 16 gigs pre-installed. So there's an upgrade option you can do there. And they both have a 256 gig NVMe on board with that Zima OS or what used to be called Casa OS pre-installed. There will definitely be links to all of these sites and stuff down in the pinned comment or description down there somewhere. Feel free to jump over there and run through the spec sheet yourself to see what's gonna be best for you. So this model comes with the Intel N100, which is a four core CPU, no hyper threading here, base model is eight gigs of DDR4 RAM. You can get an upgraded up to 16 gigs. The N100 processor has six watts of power consumption, which is really cool to see actually, but the CPU isn't gonna run much more than just storage, just a NAS use case. Maybe a couple of simple apps or containers, but for the most part, it's strictly just gonna be used as a NAS. If you're looking for something that's more on the server side, the Pro model is designed for that. The i5 can be a great little server for a beefier virtualization environment. In fact, if they sent me the i5 model, I would have slapped Proxmox on it and added it to my primary cluster and used it for some dedicated VMs on top of backups. Plus with DDR5, that would be a fantastic home lab to play with for sure. Both models have the same storage options though, six three and a half inch SATA drives. It also has four NVMe on a single daughter board that has a U.2 connection and two NVMe ports on the motherboard directly. The connector on the back plane for where the drives connect is actually a SAS connector. So it looks like you can put some 10K, 15K SAS drives in this thing. Now I haven't tried it, but it does look like a SAS connector to me. The four M.2s that are in that seventh bay are running at 800 megabytes a second, whereas the Pro model, the specs say it runs at 3,200 megabytes a second. That's a big difference. Both models also have PCIe ports on board. One is X16, one is an open-ended X8, but that's, that's just the port, that's just the footprint. 
neither of them run at that X8 or X16 speed. The base model, the one I have, runs at Gen 3 speeds, and the Pro model is at Gen 4. So the X16 Gen 3 runs at two lanes, where the X8 runs one lane. Did they really need the long ports in there? Could we just do with like an open-ended four and an open-ended one? As long as you know about the decreased speeds and don't expect that full capacity on those slots. The model I got has dual two and a half gigabit NICs on board, which is more than enough for me right now. I'm running a one gig network. I was planning on bumping to a 10 gig network eventually. We'll just, we'll say eventually. Anyway, so when I'm ready to jump to 10 gig speed, maybe I can just slap a 10 gig card into one of those PCI ports, PCIe ports. So let's talk about those drive bays. So these SATA bays are built for three and a half inch drives. You can install a two and a half inch drive on them. I've seen some other reviews on this model and on the Pro model, and they're saying that the NAS is pretty pretty loud. I don't think it is. This specific box is actually going into my server rack. So it's going to be right next to all of the rest of the network gear in the basement, in the back corner. It can be as fucking loud as it needs to be. So that doesn't matter for me. And for a lot of people that just kind of have it with the rest of their computer stuff, like in a server closet, who cares? I do like that this looks pretty cool and wouldn't look bad in the living room. Like if you decided to hook it up directly to a TV. Something about this reminds me of my grandpa's basement. That style with the slot, the slats, that vent. This, this, this thing here, just like something about it reminds me of grandpa's basement. It would be cool. Ooh, what if I took the side panels off and I hydro dip them with a wood grain film? Oh. That would look fucking sweet. There's a USB port on the board. Not a big deal. I see those in servers all the time. And it has a Wi-Fi N dongle in it. Not sure what to think about that. But I mean, it's on a USB port, so you can probably just get a, a, a Wi-Fi 6 or 6E USB dongle instead. I don't know if you need like extra drivers to make those work, but I'm not gonna be running this thing on Wi-Fi anyway. I could see where you could though. All right, let's talk price. So here we are on Zima's store, shop.zimaboard.com. And here's your Zima Blade for 70 bucks, your Zima Board for 90 bucks, starting at, they have different models for these, Zima Cube Personal Cloud for 650, and the Zima Cube Pro for 1100. The model I got has the N100 with 16 gigs of RAM, and it's 679. We're just under 700 bucks here. Front grill special edition. What's a special edition front grill? Oh different. Oh, that's cool. I was just talking about that. Oh, dude, that looks sweet. Okay, I gotta buy that. That definitely reminds me of my grandpa's basement. Poker tables and cigars come to mind. Whatever it is, it takes me back and it's great. And they've got an additional X4 to dual NVMe M.2 board that you can slap in there too. So that'd be 14 drives. That's a lot of storage, man. 164 terabytes in one case and it's capable of RAID. So you've got redundancy. Zima Cube series, so there's the Pro, that's 650, 680 is the one I got. So for a little bit more, for almost double the price, you get an i5 10 core processor, which I think is eight E cores, two P cores on that one, the 1235U, up to 64 gigs of RAM and that 256 SSD, NVMe SSD. But this model also has 10 gig copper, as well as dual two and a half gig copper. And I think it's an extra USB 3 port. And then they have a creator pack, Zima Cube Pro, but it comes with a terabyte NVMe on board and you get the RTX 2000 ADA for two grand. I guess I could see that. All right, so my machine, $680 plus shipping plus tax. What else could you get for that same 680? Be in that sweet spot. That's a, it holds a lot of storage here. So where do we go when we wanna look for a comparison against other storage devices. Here we are on Newegg, desktop NAS diskless. So six bay, oh, not much, not in this price point. So, so the DS620 uses DDR3 RAM and it's 450, not comparable. TerraMaster has a six bay NAS with a quad core proc. Okay, it, for the 700 bucks, DDR4 RAM, dual two and a half gig ports. Oh, let's look at this one then. This looks pretty close. So this one has six bays, four gigs of RAM. You can upgrade the RAM up to 32 
uh, gigs. It does have HDMI on board, doesn't have DisplayPort, but it only has two USB on the back, two USB-A. 3.0 or 3.1. Looks like that's it. Very limited on connections, connectivity, accessories, storage solution using iSCSI for like a, a DAE or um, for extending storage and database services. This is not comparable to the Zima Cube. Let's look at Amazon real quick. Yeah, now we're getting into much more expensive machines. QNAP, six bay NAS diskless. Has a six bay for about 700 bucks, okay. Synology, it's the 1522. That's an older model too, I believe. Well, but that's only five bays. See, the QNAP, again, two and a half gig networking M.2 2280 slots. It's the same Gen 3, dual NICs. Um, with a 10 gig card expandable. Again, those look kind of looks proprietary, but you get cloud storage that they give you, but why would you want cloud storage if you have a NAS? Kind of defeats the purpose. This is a really good price point for what you get in the form factor of the Zima Cube standard. I do think the Pro, I don't know, for $1,000 though, you get a lot for that. And you get a beefy ass CPU. So what are your thoughts on this NAS, on this Zima Cube? The standard versus the pro versus the creator pack. Is it better than or as good as a Synology, but at a better price point? Leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. If you're interested in any of these uh, devices, these Zima Cubes, links will be down in that pinned comment. Let them know I sent you. I don't have a promo code. They just, they just sent me a, a, a box. They just sent me a box and it showed up and I opened it up and I'm like, holy shit, this thing's fucking heavy. If you made it this far in the video and you learned something today, smash that thumbs up button. It really helps the channel get recommended out to others. And if this is the kind of video that you like to watch or you're interested in seeing what else we can do with this Zima Cube, subscribe to see more like it and find out. And of course, thanks for watching, motherfucker.